Hello again, my fellow pilots and aircraft maintenance personnel. Your host is Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Welcome to my aviation nuggets for today. Before I start, keep in mind that my aviation nuggets is a performance support tools. It is not a formal training, so always refer to your maintenance and operational manuals before starting aircraft maintenance and operational activities. So, today I will speak about the electrical control of the outflow valve or discharge valve. What you see here in this figure is the outflow valve or what it called discharge valve. This is the main valve for aircraft pressurization or cabin altitude control. So as you can see here, this outflow valve is used to control cabin altitude, used to control cabin altitude. Okay, everybody. Today I will speak about electrical control, O2 modes, manual modes. And as you can see here from this schematic, the actuator used to operate the outflow valve is using or uh, is using three motors ac motor one ac motor two and dc motor so we have three motors to operate the outflow valve this is for redundancy this is for redundancy okay so as you can see we have actuator with three motors why three motors everybody this is for redundancy and because also we do have cabin pressure controller or pressure controller used to control the outflow valve. For electrical control of the outflow valve, we must have in the avionics compartment or E and E a compartment a cabin pressure controller. And for redundancy, we do have two uh, two pressure controller as motor one with CBC one and the motor two with CBC two. And we do have a third motor, uh, which will be controlled from the pressurization panel. Pressurization panel. Okay, everybody. So, regarding construction of the outflow valve, we do have two panels or two doors, aft door and forward door. And the mechanical linkage to transmit electrical power or electrical movement from the actuator into a mechanical movement to open and close the outflow valve doors outflow valve doors so as you can see we here we have two doors forward and aft door and keep in mind that these two doors when they are open especially in the cruise detent when the outflow valve in the cruise detent it is partially open not fully closed and partially open and when the forward and aft door open they do like a venturi effect to do an added value to the thrust because we don't need the outflow valve during cruise to do a drag on the aircraft not drag it must perform like an added value to thrust so if we have a venturi effect because when it is open during cruise detent, it's not fully closed. It is. It will be partially open, and we do have a high pressure inside the aircraft, and the air will escape to the outside of the aircraft. So we need what it called a venturi effect to allow the outflow valve to add value to thrust and not provide drag on the aircraft. Not provide drag on the aircraft operation. Okay, everybody. So this is an electrically operated discharge valve by an actuator, and this actuator has three motors, three motors, AC motor, D, uh, AC motor one, AC motor two, and DC motor, and DC motor. Why we may have AC and DC motor? To control the speed of the closing and opening of the outflow valve. And if we control the speed of opening and closing of the outflow valve, we will control the cabin rate of change. We will control the cabin rate of change. And during some circumstances during flight, the pilot may need to close or open the outflow valve in a fast response. Other than the response that uh, will the automatic controller do. Okay, everybody. 
So now we will see the pressure controller. This is one of the two pressure controller. Most of the airliner do have two controller or two CBC called the cabin pressure controller. This is a basic schematic for the pressure controller. And as you can see here, some uh, switches and some sensors on the cabin pressure controller. Uh, like as you can see here, this is the pressure sensor that senses a cabin pressure to the cabin pressure controller. Because the cabin pressure controller, in order to control automatically the outflow valve or discharge valve, it always in need to the cabin pressure and outside pressure or and ambient pressure. Ambient pressure mainly come from the air data computer. And the cabin pressure come from this pressure sensor installed on the uh, pressure controller itself. It's called like a transducer to transfer cabin pressure into electrical signal and provide it to the pressure controller. Also, we do have test buttons on the cabin pressure controller, status lights, fault lights, and the bite control and the bite control. So this is one from the two pressure controller uh, that will control automatically the outflow valve. Okay, everybody. And this is a schematic for uh, electrical control of the outflow valve. This is the outflow valve. And this is the pressure controller called the CBC, cabin pressure controller. As I told you, the cabin pressure controller will always in need for cabin pressure or cabin altitude and ambient altitude or ambient pressure from the air data computer. As you can see here, different sources of electrical information which are passed to the pressure controller. Also the pressure controller uh, do need power from like AC or DC. This is called load control center. And the pressure controller will interface with the cabin pressure control panel, cabin pressure control panel, or cabin altitude control panel, like cabin rate of change, cabin altitude, flight ground information, standby mode. For flight ground information, it comes from the landing gear landing gear computer or landing gear proximity switches will indicate to the pressure controller if the aircraft on ground or in flight. Okay, in auto mode, the pressure controller will close and open the outflow valve. In auto mode, the pressure controller will open and close the outflow valve and the control of cabin altitude will be automatically from the cabin pressure controller. So, CBC1, motor 1, auto 1. And CBC2, motor 2, auto 2. And we have third motor for manual control just in case the two cabin pressure controller fail. So the pilot will do have a privilege to control cabin altitude manually from the pressurization panel from the pressurization panel as you can see here O2 and standby this is O2 1 and O2 2 and if both O2 fail the pilot can manually control the outflow valve either by an AC or DC motor okay everybody so let's continue so as you can see here the controller is fed with numerous inputs which include ambient pressure signals from the air data computer outside pressure or outside altitude from the air data computer cabin pressure this is from the sensor on the cabin pressure controller itself or cabin altitude engine thrust lever position this tells or will tell the controller when takeoff is commencing. Air ground logic. This initiates the controller into flight or ground mode. This mainly comes from the landing gear computer if installed or landing gear proximity sensors. 
and a tachometer. This provides a feedback signal from the discharge valve motor to the controller to improve the motor response. On the outflow valve motors, there is like a tachometer to indicate to the pressure controller the speed of the motors. And the pressure controller will always in need for this speed of rotation to enhance the control of the motors regarding outflow valve operation. Regarding outflow valve operation. Okay. So, uh, pressure controller receive electrical signal from the pressure control panel. Okay, as I told you, the pressure controller will receive electrical signal from the pressure control panel, just in case, or for example, if the pilot select manual control of the outflow valve, so now he will open and close the outflow valve manually from the pressure control panel. From the pressure control panel. Okay, everybody. And we do have a transducer within the pressure controller itself. This is a cabin for cabin pressure sensing. Transducer or pressure sensor on the pressure controller itself to sense cabin altitude into the pressure controller. So the air pressure is converted into an electrical signal using this transducer. And it is located on the pressure controller itself for sensing cabin altitude or cabin pressure. Okay. And also the pressure controller receive ambient pressure from air data computer. The pressure controller will receive the ambient pressure from the air data computer, ADIR or ADRIU. Okay. So as you can see here, the pressure control panel is used by the pilot to select cabin altitude and rate of change and rate of change. From the pressure control panel, the pilots need to monitor the cabin altitude and they need to monitor the cabin rate of change during the climb and descent. Okay. So for automatically or for auto control the cabin altitude in most of the airliner now is programmed or is need to be at 8,000 feet. During flight the aircraft is at whatever altitude but we need the cabin altitude to be like at 8,000 feet. Okay. So from the pressure control panel, the pressure control panel is used by the pilot to select cabin altitude and rate of change and to monitor cabin altitude and rate of change of cabin during climb and descent. Okay. This is an example of the cabin altitude control panel or what it called the pressurization panel. The pressure control panel is used by the pilot to select the cabin altitude and rate of change. Okay, and the pilot need to monitor cabin altitude and the cabin rate of change from here. Cabin altitude and the cabin rate of change from here. And this is delta B, delta B or differential pressure indication. Uh, it is uh, an indication to the differential pressure uh, in. Uh, between inside and outside of the aircraft. This is for structure conformity and the structure uh, integrity or visilage integrity. The pilot also has a limitation for delta B, positive and the negative differential pressure. And this is the mode select selector. We have O21, O22 and the manual mode. O21 is cabin pressure controller one with motor one. And O22 is cabin pressure controller 2 and the motor 2. And just in case if both O2 controller fail, the pilot will do have a privilege to manually control the outflow valve. He will put the smooth selector on manual 
and will open and close the outflow valve from the manual selector knob. Okay, everybody. And from here, the pilot will uh, monitor the outflow valve indication and outflow valve position indicator. And this to select the rate of a change of the cabin altitude, rate of a change of cabin altitude. Okay, everybody. So let's go in deep in this panel. Let's move in deep into the cabin altitude control panel. And as I told you, as usual, pilot can also select various modes of system operation, including auto mode or manual mode. Auto mode or manual mode. As I, as I told you, from the mode select selector, mode select knob, auto one, auto two, or manual mode. And for manual, maybe, and for manual, maybe, AC or DC motor. And as I told you again before, AC or DC motor will control the speed of rotation of the outflow valve, like from opening to closing, how many seconds it needs. So we have AC motor and DC motor to control the speed of rotation of opening and closing the outflow valve. Okay. So if O21 or O22 is selected, Cabin pressure controller one will control the outflow valve using motor one. And O22, cabin pressure controller two, will control motor two to open and close of the outflow valve. So, for a summary, in the O2 setting, the pressurization system will function completely automatically. Again, in the O2 setting, the pressurization system will function completely automatically and the pilot will monitor cabin rate of change and the cabin altitude and the differential pressure and the discharge valve indication on the indicator in the cockpit. This is the O2 mode. So, what if both automatic controller fail? As, as you can see here, should this system fail or both automatic system fail, the pilot can select one of the two manual modes of operation using AC or DC electrical power. Because here in this presentation, the manual mode may be using AC motor or DC motor, as I told you. So we have here two manual modes, but in most airliner, it's only one manual mode. So if both auto mode fail or both automatic pressure controller fail, the pilot will put this mode select knob on the manual sector and will open and close the outflow valve from the manual selector knob. Okay, everybody. So this is the schematic for the electrical control of the outflow valve. Electrical control of the outflow valve. So let's continue. Regarding the cabin altitude panel or pressurization panel. As you can see here, a discharge valve position indicator or outflow valve position indicator on the control panel enables the pilot to monitor the valve position at any time. If auto or manual is selected, the pilot will uh, monitor the outflow valve position from the indication or outflow valve position indicator. Okay, this is the discharge valve or outflow valve. And on the indication panel or on the ECAM or ICAS for sophisticated modern airliner, the pilot will monitor the outflow valve position from the outflow valve position indicator. Okay. So, if manual is selected, a switch below the indicator allows the pilot to control the opening and closing of the discharge valve. This is the selector, manual selector, to control the outflow valve open or close. If manual mode is selected, just in case of both auto mode fail so again if manual is selected 
a switch below the indicator allows the pilot to control the opening or clo and closing of the discharge valve. By selecting the switch to open or close and the monitor the valve position on the indicator. This is the valve position indicator and this is the selector knob that used to control the outflow valve manually if both automatic system fail. Okay. So the cabin altitude and rate of change indicators would also be monitored to ensure that limits were not being exceeded. On the pressurization indicator panel, the pilot always monitors the cabin altitude and the cabin rate of change and the outflow valve position indicator. Okay, everybody. This is to assure that no limit is exceeded or are exceeded. Okay, everybody. So let's go in deep in the, again, in the selector knobs on the cabin altitude control. This is the mode selector knob. O to one, O to two, and the manual mode. So mode select switch. This permits the selection of one of two completely automatic pressure controllers and a manual position should both automatic controllers fail. O to one, cabin pressure controller one with motor one. O to two, cabin pressure controller two with motor two. If both auto system fail, manual control will be done using the third motor. Manual control will be done using the third motor. Okay, everybody. What about the manual valve control? This is the manual valve selector knob. If the pilot select from the mode select manual control, he will open and close the outflow valve manually from this selector knob. So manual valve control, this knob enable the crew to select the discharge valve position or outflow valve position when the mode select switch is in the manual mode. So manual and manual. Manual from the mode select, then the pilot will manually control opening and closing of the outflow valve from the manual valve control knob or manual selector knob. Okay. Discharge valve position indicator. This is the outflow valve position indicator. This indicator enables the crew to monitor the position of the discharge valve in all mode selections. O to mode or manual mode, the pilot always in need to monitor the outflow valve position indication on the indicator panel or on the ECAM or ICAS for modern airliner. Okay, everybody. What about the auto rate knob? Auto rate. This knob selects the cabin rate of change. From here, we select the cabin rate of change. And from here, we monitor the cabin rate of change. So this auto rate knob, this knob selects the cabin rate of change. In the normal setting, which is auto setting, in figure, the cabin rate of change will automatically be controlled, for example, to 500 feet per minute during climb and 300 feet per minute during descent. And, and from here, we have a question. Why the cabin rate of change during climb is higher than the cabin rate of change during descent? This is related to our eardrum, our ear. And to answer this question, we will see here. The cabin rate of change during climb in automatic mode or in manual need to be higher than the cabin rate of change during descent because our eardrums are more sensitive to the positive pressure increase which are encountered during descent. During aircraft descent, the cabin pressurization increase. So the outside pressure related to our eardrum will be increased and we are more sensitive to increase in pressure rather than decrease in pressure. 
so that during descent the cabin rate of change is less than the cabin rate of change during climb so again our eardrum are more sensitive to the positive pressure increase which are encountered during descent particularly at the lower altitude it is for this reason that the cabin rate of change is controlled to a lower setting than during ascent i need to explain this more deeply during ascent or during climb the cabin altitude will change from the field elevation like uh, for example we are on an airport of 1000 feet altitude so the cabin altitude will transfer from 1000 feet to 8000 feet increase in cabin altitude means that the cabin pressure will decrease and this decrease in cabin pressure is not very sensitive to our eardrum but in the opposite uh, movement during descent the cabin altitude will decrease from 8,000 feet to the field elevation of the landing airport, for example, also it's 1,000 feet. So decreasing from 8,000 feet to 1,000 feet mean an increase of cabin pressure. So our ear will sustain increase in air pressure, increase in cabin pressure during descent. Okay. What about the landing altitude counter? Here we have a landing altitude counter. From here the pilot will select or put the field elevation of the airport he will land on. If the autopilot is engaged, the flight management guidance computer or autopilot computer will feed the cabin pressure controller from the uh, navigation database, the field elevation of the, uh, the airport we will land on. But in, if something happened to the autopilot, the pilot can select the field elevation of the landing airport from this selector knob to be fed to the cabin pressure controller because the cabin pressure controller needs the field elevation of the landing airport to make the pressurization pattern to do the calculation of the pressurization pattern to control the cabin altitude and the cabin rate of change. So again, from this knob, which is called the landing altitude counter, the destination airport altitude is set using the landing altitude selector. This will ensure that the system fully depressurizes the aircraft on landing. So, also this field elevation or landing field elevation if the cabin controller know that we are now on the on the ground he need to fully open the outflow valve in order to depressurize the fuselage or depressurize the cabin okay everybody we have here an indication for the o2 system in operative so the pilot we need to know when both auto system fail when both auto system fail so this is the auto in op indication auto inoperative indication so this light eliminate when both pressure controllers fail cbc1 and cbc2 if only one controller fail and the other one automatically switch on and control we still have an auto control, so this auto inoperative indication will be still extinguished. It only illuminates if both auto system fail. If both auto system fail. So this is called the auto inoperative indication. Thank you for your good listening and always stay tuned for my aviation nuggets. It is a performance support tools for my ferro pilots and aircraft maintenance personnel. Please stay tuned for my upcoming aviation nuggets. I will go more deeply into the pressurization system or cabin altitude control. So always stay tuned for my next sessions and always fly safely and maintain your aircraft very safely. Thank you for your good listening and bye-bye.